Over the past half a year, we've been planning and building this Cayman GTS. You guys have seen it since the very beginning, the pickup, the teardown, destruction, and build up. Today is no different. This might just be the most transformative part of the entire build. And today, we find out if all of our hard work has paid off. We have an epic episode in store for you guys today, but before we get into today's video, I wanted to let you guys know that we also have a brand new Legends Collection live right now. Introducing the Sake Cat Collection, which is inspired a little bit by what I've seen in Japan. I kind of wanted to take that traditional samurai styling and artwork and twist that into something for Legends. And with two things I really love, Sake and the Lucky Cat, I brought that into a full collection for you guys. Now, with the collection, we have two brand new t-shirts. We have have a white t-shirt, which you guys can see right here with also the sake cat on the back. We brought a black t-shirt for you guys. And right here, we also have pullover, which is definitely one of my favorite pieces of the drop. What I am most excited about, check this out. Something we have never done before. For the sake lucky cat collection, we did a legend sake set for you guys. A full bottle to heat your sake up and then little sharing cups as well. This is so freaking sick. These are extremely limited. So if you guys want to get a sake set, make sure to head to the site right now because these definitely will sell out but definitely one of the coolest things that we've ever done for legends so we have the brand new sake cat collection live right now if you guys want to get any of this for yourself this will be the first thing down in the description box below do me a huge favor help support the channel and help support what we do here head to the first link down in the description box below check out the channel we have tons of stuff live right now and including a brand new sake cat collection you're not going to miss it let's hop back into today's video Like I said, it's been a while since buying this car. Over these past months, we've accumulated what we think is every piece of the puzzle to put this thing back together. Today, that's what we're doing. Well, we hope. Today's gonna be one of the best days of the Cayman GTS rebuild. On the last episode of the Cayman GTS rebuild, you guys saw us put an entire new front end on the car. Today, we're gonna see if all the hard work that we actually put into this car was actually worth it. As you guys can see, we have been stockpiling for months and months. Seriously, since, what was it, Tim? Last September? This is for a, another story at another time, but when I bought my 911 SC, the original dealership that sold that car originally to the first owner that went to jail reached out saying that, hey, we sold that car, we wanna work with you. Well, fast forward, ever since I bought the 911 SC, I got this thing and they were super stoked when I bought it and I told them the idea of it and they were the ones to help us source a lot of the OEM parts that we needed. So huge thank you to Rockland Porsche. In the last episode, like I've already said, you guys saw us install the brand new front end on this car. We no longer have a, a technically wrecked Porsche because we kind of already fixed it. And today the purpose is to make sure that we fixed it correctly. Through the process, you guys have seen us drill out spot welds, rivets, take off adhesive, all of the above. The catch there is we have to redo everything that we did to take it all off, which means we have to rivet, we have to install adhesive, etc., and put everything back. But before we can get to that point, we have to make sure that all of this lines up correctly. Now, SOS came by and helped us straighten out these frame rails. Tim and I got the replacement frame rails on, which allowed us to put the tub on. Before we can say that this thing is fixed, we need to make sure that it's aligned properly. And what we have to do today is put on the entire front end, meaning all the body panels onto this front and making sure that it doesn't look out of shape, wonky, it doesn't have gaps, all of the above. So that is our mission for today. But you guys know me, I can't just put stock GTS parts back on the car. Today, we have something to really completely transform the front end of this GTS and make it into something completely unique. <laughs> Now you guys didn't think we were just gonna be rebuilding your average GTS, right? I love race cars. Porsche GT3 and GT4 cars have been a dream of mine, and unfortunately, we don't have a cup car. But today, we are gonna make our own. So today, we're gonna be taking this GTS and turning it into our very own GTS Street Cup. Meaning, since we can't have our own cup car right now, we're gonna be turning this GTS into kind of my DIY cup car build. Something that has the personality of a cup car, but has all the functionality and accessories that a street car has. So essentially, turning this GTS into what I'm gonna call the Porsche GTS Street Cup. Now, in order to do that, we have all of this stuff behind me. So let's take a 
look at exactly what we have. Now in order to get this process going, it's time to put everything on. Generally everything. We're not gonna do a lot of the accessories yet because once we make sure all of this stuff fits and we rivet and seam seal, this car has gotta go to paint. And we're gonna leave everything off for that so we can get in as deep as possible. So to start out what we're gonna be doing today, we're gonna start with the fenders, then move to the front bumper, and lastly move to our hood. And looking at all of that together, seeing if it lines up as best as possible, making sure that what we did is correct. Like I said, first up vendors, let's take a look. To start out this build, we got brand new. GT2 RS style fenders for the GTS, meaning these have the really cool GT2 or GT3 RS style vents in the fenders, which is gonna look so aggressive on the car. Just a quick mock up here. So aggressive when it's complete. This is just like a rough, a rough look here. The vents are in there. We've got some special plans for the vents and everything, but uh, first up, GT2 RS style fenders. All right, before we move on, let's install these fenders. Our friends over at Rockland Porsche were kind enough to help us source everything that was available. So all of the parts and accessories that were wrecked are now replaced. Although today we'll only be putting on what is needed for the fenders because like I said, all of this has to come back off. So first up with the brackets connecting the fender to the front tub. Once the fender brackets are installed, we can install the bolts to hold in the fender. Holy crap, dude, it's looking like a freaking car. Man, do I love it when a plan comes together. The fenders fit perfectly. Next up, it's the front bumper. And in order to fit the front bumper onto the car, we do install the clips and the bracket that connect the fender to the front bumper. Slowly but surely, she is turning into a car. Now, we do have the vents. We're not gonna install the vents because they're just gonna have to be uninstalled for the body shop. Right now, we're just really focused on making sure everything fits. So far, the fenders look really good. Next up will probably be the biggest transformation on the car that you guys have seen thus far in the build. And that's going to be the front bumper. And I got a very special front bumper hiding away in this box. Let's go ahead and unbox it and we are gonna test fit it. And I mean, this car is going to look like a freaking car with the front bumper on. I mean, step by step today, the transformation is gonna be insane. Even with just the fenders, look at that. It's coming together, dude. This is crazy. Okay, all right, enough talking. Let's open up the front bumper. Say hello to our new front end. Well, let me just un undo it and then you can see it, but it comes with literally everything we need. If you guys remember when we first saw the car, it was in pieces destroyed. So many little plastics, clips, vents, everything destroyed. We found a front bumper that not only came with anything, but it's upgraded and looks awesome. Go ahead and get it out of the box and show you guys what we got. Dude, this is crazy. All of these pieces are not OEM. Buying OEM GT4 or cup parts costs more than an entire car. But what this is, is extremely high quality. And as you guys can see, I mean, it looks really, really nice. It's the next best thing that we can get to the OEM Porsche quality. But this is going to look fantastic at a fraction of the OEM price. Oh, here she is. Let's get her open. Next step in the GTS Street Cup build, the GT4 front bumper. This adds a much more aggressive styling to the front end while allowing for more airflow and downforce in the future. We have a GT4 style front bumper. Comes with literally everything we need. All the vents, all the clips, all the plastics, and a GT4 front lip all in one for the GTS. So take a look at this. I'm just gonna mock her up. You're just gonna send it? I'm just gonna send it. So it's, it's hard. It's hard for us because we're still waiting on the top piece which bolts in the fenders and it might even, kinda looks like it bolts in the front bumper too. 
Like I said, this bumper comes with literally everything, but today we're just doing the necessities to get it on and make sure everything fits. First up, bumper clips and sliding it into the fender brackets to make sure it holds on. Dude. Yeah, that's fucking on the money. Dude. It lines up. <laughs> Shit. Oh my God. Put this guy in, see what happens. Holy, oh guys, look. I'm speechless. Now the reason we're so stoked about this is not only does it look incredible, but the fact that the bumper lines up with the fenders means the frame rails are straight and all the work that we've been doing is paying off. Dude, we got a freaking, it's, it's, we have a freaking car. I mean, oh, it, 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 everything we did worked. worked. That's, it literally that's, worked. Tim, we just, we, <laughs> we just need Porsche. to make it 100%. Uh, it's almost going too fast for me right now because I want to like sit back and just enjoy what we've just done. And a pre like, look at this, dude. We've got GT2 R style fenders. GT4 RS front bumper. Granted, I mean, we still have like the lip and all the plastics, which is gonna give it even more flair. And also we have headlights back here, which you guys will see pretty soon. But I mean, guys, it worked. It, worked. it worked. Now we have the final and the biggest piece for today, this. This is something that I actually saved up for for a long time. Tim told me not to get this because we didn't need it. But this is, I, I wanted it. I wanted it so bad and it, I feel it like fits with what you're doing. for the GTS Street Cup, this is going to be one of the coolest parts and something to give it that cup look flair. I mean, if the massive, what will be carbon vents and the fenders didn't do it for you or the beautiful GT4 style front bumper, this hood is going to change the game for this car. Let's go ahead and take a look. This is what I have saved up for and waited a very long time. Boom. Bubble wrap. No. Check this out. This is going to be insane. Oh my God, I almost dropped it. We have a full dry carbon. Dry, the driest of the dry carbon. Look at this. Ugh. Dry carbon GT4 RS style front hood. Did I need to go full send on this? No, but did I want to? Absolutely. If we're building a GTS Street Cup, we're going GTS Street Cup, baby. Look at this. Beautiful quality. It is, seriously, it, it's amazing. It's dry carbon on the backside and they clear it over it on the hood. I'm still going back and forth when we take the car to paint. I kind of want to have them strip this and clear it in matte so it stays dry carbon. You guys can let me know in the comments what you think about that. This is what is gonna be next for the install. We can set this on and the whole front end of the car is gonna look insane. Are you ready, Tim? Yes. Let's do this. The dry carbon bonnet is going to completely set off the front end. It's lightweight with functional brake ducts, which makes this even better. But before we install this, we're gonna put the bonnet bumpers on and the latch so we can properly install the bonnet. Moment of truth, Tim. Yep. Yes, it's loose. It's loose right now, so we can still move it, but. Yes, the front bumper and the fenders need to line up, but the hood is what's gonna really tell us if everything together works. Tim, do the honors. The hood is also extremely light. It's really cool. It's, that? that is just loose, just moving. Oh my God. So we have nice size gap right here. Yours is a little bit better than mine. But again, remember, these are not bolted in fully. Like, look at this. Like when it's properly bolted in, that's a normal hood gap. See? You gotta remember guys, we still have- Does it have a gap here? Huh? Does the car have a gap here? 
The hood looks absolutely insane paired with the GT2 RS style fenders and the GT4 front bumper, but we are having a slight issue. So what we're noticing here is when this hood is latched like that, we have a big gap in the front bumper to the hood, or I, I'm gonna call it a bonnet, the front bumper to the bonnet here. And we're thinking that's because our hood hinges may have gotten damaged in the wreck. We didn't even think about that when we're ordering all the parts. So one thing that we can do, or one thing that we did notice, these hinges might be just a little bit off. And that's one of the things that we didn't replace. So it doesn't look bad. What we are finding out is everything else fits. If you guys can look at the bolts down here, all to the front tub here. The front tub is straight, the frame rails are straight, the fenders fit, it's a hood issue at this point. And honestly, what we should have done in the first place is replace the hinges, especially after a front end collision. You should just do that no matter what. Especially with how destroyed the bonnet was, we should have replaced the hinges. So that is one thing that we're gonna do. And if that doesn't work, it could be just because it's an aftermarket carbon hood. And what we will have to do is Dremel out a little bit of our hinges right here so that we can scoot the bonnet forward and we will no longer have this gap right here. But the good news is everything else, spot on. This is great news. The dry carbon bonnet looks fantastic. We're having a little bit of fitment issues, but nothing that can't be fixed. I'm so stoked to see what this thing is gonna look like when it's completely finished, but we can't celebrate just yet. There's one more critical piece to the puzzle that we have to fit up today. Our last test of fitment today, the subframe. Much like our body panels, the subframe is a telltale if everything we did lines up. Now, as you guys can see, the body panels look fantastic. The car is coming together, but this only goes so far. The subframe quite literally holds everything together. And granted, we still have a lot of work to do on the suspension on this side. Just aligning the subframe bolts to the tub of the car is going to 100% tell us that everything is lined up properly. And once we do this, everything is good to go, aside from us just waiting on parts. So we have one last test fit for today, and that's gonna be the subframe. If these subframe bolts line up, we are 100% good to go. If not, we've got some more work to do. This could be the make or break for us. If the subframe doesn't line up, we've got a serious issue. To test this, we're gonna lower the car down on top of the subframe and loosely screw in the bolts. Good news guys, subframe works. Okay, little update for you guys. As much as we would love to install all of our suspension and do the subframe so it could be completely rolling with its wheels, we have to leave the subframe off. But the good news is all the bolts fit in and work. And the reason why we're having to leave the subframe off is because when we take this to the body shop, all of this, see where we have to seam seal and everything, all of this is going to get painted even behind the front tub. And to make sure we get every little nook and cranny, the subframe has to stay off. But that's not a problem because Tim whipped up a pretty cool little contraption and be able to make this thing roll. But now that we have the body panels on, the subframe on, it is a hundred percent confirmed. Tim, it lines up. we freaking fix this no, damn car, no. dude. We can glue her together. <laughs> <laughs> yes, now we can glue her all together, quite literally. But, I mean, we still gotta wait for parts. But, that is insane. We're gonna get this subframe off, show you guys what Tim built uh, to be able to wheel this thing around and continue on with a couple of smaller things that we need to do. But, all in all, we fixed this damn car. This is insane. All right. Let me get this thing off. Check out this contraption. So Tim actually made this piece here out of just some nice steel and some rolly wheels from extra metal and stuff to be able to roll this thing around. We knew that we weren't gonna be able to put the subframe on and bring it like that to the body shop. So to make it easy on us to transport this thing to the body shop, Tim made this and just kind of DIY fab this up in the shop, which I think is super cool. And it'll be the first time that this GTS has been off of the lift and it's almost in its complete state. That's nuts. Okay, let's drop her down 
We're gonna roll her off the lift and we're actually be starting to work on the interior now. And we'll show you guys exactly why. Today's episode is just completely full of epic wins. I mean, the car's off the lift, Tim. It's off the lift. Dude, it's, it, it looks amazing, but I, I'm envisioning what it's gonna look like when it's done. It's yeah. gonna be sick. It's gonna be nuts. So this is a massive, massive step. And exterior wise, we are on hold until the rest of our parts come in. So like I told you guys, we're still waiting on the piece of the tub that kind of squishes everything together. And once that comes in, we can rivet and seam seal. So we're taking a pause on that. But there's one other really big issue with this car that we have got to get fixed. And, uh, you know, what better time than now? It's the interior. This is one of my favorite parts about this car. When I first got this car, we talked to Kevin. Oh, Kevin. You think you owe me? <laughs> All right, you owe me. I don't know what yet. They spec this car out with every option you could get. Carbon package, the red and black Alcantara, the Alcantara steering wheel, the headliner, literally everything, even down to the red tachometer and the hand-painted red air vents. It's beautiful, I love a good interior, and they really outdid it with this. But obviously the problems are, during the wreck, they had airbags deploy, but thankfully only a couple of them. We have the steering wheel airbag, and then our leg airbag underneath the dash. Today we're gonna be replacing those, as well as getting our OEM seatbelt out, because this also is now locked due to the wreck. Once the airbag is deployed and the wreck happened, the seatbelt is now locked. And instead of trying to fix this one, I'd rather just get a complete new seatbelt. So we're gonna be removing all of these plastics and getting the seatbelt out as well as replacing the airbags. Shouldn't be too bad, let's hop into it. Our last project for the day. To get the steering wheel airbag out, all you need is a flathead to enter nice. the hole under the wheel and pop the latch, super easy. Next up are the sensors. Oh yeah, yeah. Sam, will you do the honors of getting the new one? Yes. Thank you, sir. Look at this. Even this is gonna make the interior look a whole oh, lot yeah. better. <laughs> nice and color coded. Fresh Just airbag. like that. Just like that. Next up, leg airbags. Now this is pretty interesting to get to. Hiding under the dash, you have two Torx bit bolts holding in your leg airbag. Another easy install. Once those two bolts are out, you can grab your other airbag, plug the two sensors in, and bolt it right back up. Holy crap, dude, we got airbags. All right, both bolts are in. We now have Steer wheel airbag and feet airbag. Next up, seatbelts. Brand new, brand new car. Now for the seatbelt. Fairly easy, remove some plastics, get your sensor out, and there's two 12 star bits holding your seatbelt in. Dude. Okay, so yeah, so we gotta get another seatbelt. 
but other than that, airbags are fixed. Interior is almost 100%. I think that kind of concludes today's activities. Dude, that this is insane. We have a whole car. So now suspension. we're suspension. Just... We got to do suspension, but suspension can't happen until this goes to the body shop and gets painted, because that's when we'll do the subframe, the new arms, the upgraded suspension that we have. Shout out to Fitment Industries. We're so close, man. So for those of you guys watching, next steps after this is body shop, but we have to wait until our parts come in and we'll keep you updated on that. It's just getting crazier and crazier in here. I mean, look at this. It's wild. Now, yes, like we said in the video, we are on a standstill until we can get that top portion for the tub, but today was the biggest and most monumental part of this entire series. I mean, not even, of course, for the build itself, but I think for us and for the channel, this is the biggest project that we have ever taken on. Tim and I, in the past 10 years of working together, have never done something to this extent and never really thought that we ever could. We took the risk, we took the chance, and so far we've been knocking it out of the park and I am so damn excited. So after this episode, next steps, next steps might be the car being complete. We'll have to work that out, but that's insane that we are to this point. The GTS Street Cup is gonna be an absolute unit. We're just built different, baby. This is gonna be so damn cool. I really feel like the motto for this GTS needs to be built different. That's so good. So good. But with that, I'm rambling on. We have a late night tonight. You can see I look crazy right now probably because it's been a lot of late nights, a lot of working, but all incredible stuff and I'm super excited to show you. We're about to head to the track with the M2 with some new modifications. So stay tuned for that. But for now, we're gonna go and end today's episode number five, five episodes in and we've made it to this point. That is so cool. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're excited for the GTS Street Cup build. It's gonna be epic and you'll wanna stay tuned for what we have coming up. Thank you guys again for watching. If you have not already, make sure you hit that like button, leave us a comment down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. We'll We'll see you guys for the next episode. Peace out.